Back here on Sports Live, we're going to talk some football now. The Tennessee Titans getting set for the offseason. John Robinson, Mike Vrabel, a lot of the player personnel folks up there at Indianapolis for the NFL Combine this week. They're going to have to scout out a whole bunch of players in preparation for the NFL draft in April. And they also have to be busy thinking about what they're going to do next week when it comes to NFL free agency. Harold Landry is the biggest discussion point. He is a free agent. He's a guy who's going to command big time dollars after a 12 sack season out on the free agent market. Will the Titans pony that up at a long term deal? Will they try to slap the franchise tag on him and secure his services for at least next season? I've told you on multiple occasions that is absolutely the number one decision the Titans have to make this offseason. And I think it is paramount that they keep Harold Landry, that they make sure that he is a Titan next year. I don't know if they're going to go all in. I don't know if they're going to make him the long-term deal or pay him up over a long period of time like I'm sure he would like. But the Titans are in a win-now mode. There's no question about that. And the disappointment of the playoffs this year does not hide the fact that this was a team that was the number one seed in the AFC. It's a team that was in the AFC Championship game three seasons ago. It's won back-to-back -back division titles. They believe they're coming back next year to win. And the biggest thing I can tell you is this season, despite all the injuries and struggles on the offensive side of the ball, the defense carried the day for the Titans. It was the defense that really got them into that position. And who thought that coming into the year? The biggest reason why the defense made that huge leap was the pass rush. This team had been unable to rush and affect an opposing quarterback for a long time. And that changed this year because of Landry with his 12 sacks, because of Jeff Simmons becoming an absolute monster up front, the addition of Danico Autry, and Bud Dupree wasn't always healthy, and he was working his way back even at the beginning of the season from a torn ACL. But when Bud Dupree was on the field, the Titans' pass rush was ferocious. And we saw that in the playoffs with a record nine sacks of Joe Burrow, even in that loss against the Bengals. To me, if you're John Robinson and Mike Vrabel and you're looking at a team coming back next year, you're going to be good. But what made you great this season was a defense that for the first time in a long time could impact opposing teams in their passing game. And you've got those three guys there. Harold Landry was the ringleader in many ways, though, with 12 sacks, which led the team. You want him back. And if you've got to pay franchise tag dollars this year for one more season of that, you do it. If you're not prepared to sign him long term. Now, I'm not sure what the story is going to be there, but the Titans need to do that because that is a pivotally important piece of this offseason and what that defense is going to look like next year. So that's priority number one. One of the other real considerations they're going to have to look at is what are they going to do on the offensive line? This is a unit that has been one of the most important for the Titans for the entire time they've won, even under Mike Malarkey. It is a unit that has been a bunch of maulers, essentially. They've won in the trenches, and the Titans have been able to run the football because of it. And that's how they've won football games. But it's a unit that's getting a little bit older, has some health concerns. So what is John Robinson going to do there? First and foremost... You're paying a whole lot of money to Taylor Lewan at left tackle. He's a multi-time pro bowler. He's a former all-pro at left tackle. But he was coming off a torn ACL in 2021. He struggled early on in the season. And it was up and down throughout. I think he got much, much better at the end of the year. But the question you have to ask is at this point in his career, eight years in, with that injury in his past, is he worth the money that's going to him? at 16 or 17 million dollars a year. And if you want to part ways with them, what do you do? That's the most important position on the offensive line at left tackle. Certainly Taylor Lewan would love to be here. We saw him over the weekend out at the stadium series with Pecorino helping to throw out the catfish before that game. 
Taylor Lewan wants to be in Nashville. He wants to be a part of this community, and he wants to be a part of a really good Titans offensive line. He has for a long time here. He's one of the key figures in helping the Titans turn the franchise around. But there are questions about that salary and about his health at this point in his career. Here was Taylor Lewan at the end of the season talking about what he believes his future to be. Yeah, um, <laughs> it sucks, man. You know, we practiced the, the intensity in practice this week. Um, everyone seems so locked in and focused. You just really don't want it to go like that. Um, you, can't, you can't believe it's over, you know? Um, it just it just sucks, you know? Turnovers, obviously, were a big part of today. Yeah. You know, that's... That's how it goes, man. If, when, when we take care of the ball, when the Titans take care of the ball, and the defense plays the way they did today, we win. And, um, you know, I've said this before, it takes all 11 guys when it comes to turnovers. It, um, yeah, it just, it just sucks, man. You really, was, you. Everything seems to be, the plan was good, execution was good. Mm -hmm. How do you guys come out, how do you pay this path? Yeah, just we just didn't execute it. I mean, I think the game plan was good. Uh, we ran the ball well. Um, I thought the boys protected well. It just, you know, something they play football too. They're paid also, and you know, it's unacceptable. This is this one hurts real bad. Two years, home games, go home. Yeah. Kind of feels like a trend of concern. Uh, I, every year is a new year. I don't think that's um, a worth becoming a thing, you know. I think that's a bit of a reach. Um, I think the trend should continue to try to keep home playoff games. And, um, you know, Brable and John, um, they do an amazing job. And um, they'll make sure we, we get over that trend, as you put it. The final drive before the interception, you guys had a ball and the chance to go down and you could have been able to win it. It didn't like there was a lot of urgency. It's, mm. it's, a time, it's a time management thing. When you have, when you, we get the ball with, I think, 235, you know, uh, we had two timeouts plus a two minute warning on, you know, the 20 yard line. That's in a lot of ways, you're in regular ball. And so it's kind of, it, it's a situation of time management and making sure we have the last snap. And, um, you know, it's it just it was a good game plan. That that's a very well strong suit. That's the reason why he's coach of the year is having those types of um, game plans. To you know, they're a very potent offense and they do a great job. And you know, us having the ball in our hands for the last snap was the plan. And um, you know, I don't know what happened on the interception. I think it got tipped, right? Yeah. Um, it just it's tough, man. That's just it's just a hard pill to swallow and. I will say that the Tennessee Titans fans, man, they were unbelievable tonight. It's the last I've ever heard it in the stadium. Um, it's the most electric I've ever heard it. And they deserve they deserve to win. They played a huge part in that game of how dominant our defense was. And our offense um, just couldn't get it going. Did you feel like things were kind of lining up for you guys? You're healthy, you've been all year. Yeah, even during the game, after the first play on offense, I, I don't think there was never a point in my mind, at least, that we were going to lose this game. It was, you know, we're here, we're doing it. You know, it's, it wasn't clean, but how many dirty wins have you seen from us before, you know? And, you know, you have to give them credit. They played a phenomenal game. They, they stacked that box and played 6-1 defense. They were playing goal line in the middle of the field. And we, we ran a couple plays where just wasn't enough guys to block their guys on the front side or back side. It was, they, they did a good job. And, um, you know, I thought, I thought um, we had momentum and, we were great from the 25 to the 25. And um, this, when you get stalled out in the red zone or in the fringe area, that's what happens. You, you, you lose games. We need to make those sevens, those three sevens. Yeah, you know, the that you guys overcame, then all the talent on this roster, like how much tougher does that make the season? Yeah, that's tough, man. Um, there's a lot of talent on this roster, and um, there's a lot of adversity this season that this team worked through. And... Um, yeah, it's just, that's hard, but um, there's not a lot, a whole lot you can say to make things better. We, we got, there's no more games. It's over. And um, you just wish, 
Well, we found a way to we found a way to win that game, man. We had we had the we had it, and um, we just didn't we just didn't take care of the ball the way we should have. Two more. Yeah, I don't think that's in, that's in question. I think um, I think everyone knows. Like the, I will say, this has been a, a year of adversity for me, and not my best year by any means. But um, I think it's pretty obvious that that first year, unless you're Adrian Peterson, is um, is tough coming back and you know I didn't have a full off season to, to train I was really focusing on my knee and uh, my conditioning wasn't as good my strength wasn't as good my power wasn't as good there's was a lot of things that weren't up to my standard and then um, with with knee comes other injuries like a back and it's just how the anatomy works and so I have I have no doubt um, that I'll be back next year I think um, and I'll, I'll, I'll be back to myself I have no, no doubt about that and Last Yeah, it's 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 super shocking. I think none of us expected this. I don't think any of you guys expected this. Um, and even during the week, like the intensity in practice, you would have thought it was like a week one. Everyone seems so fresh and so ready to go. And I just, you know, in those games, man, you just have to give credit to the team that won. And they, they won. And, you know, August is a long way away. So hopefully, you know, we bring back as many guys as possible. John and Vrabel, they know what's best for this team, and they're going to do that. And um, I'm, uh, I'm excited to see how it all unfolds. Thanks, Taylor. Titans left tackle Taylor Lewan there talking about his future with the team. They're going to have to make a decision about Lewan. They're going to have to make a decision about Roger Saffold, who's 33 years of age at left guard. One of the highest priced left guards in all of football. He was a pro bowler this season, so he played well, but he was also dealing with the shoulder injury almost throughout. And he wasn't able to finish several games. He missed a game in there as well. Injuries are a concern for any lineman at that point in time in their career, but certainly for Roger Saffold, given the price that the Titans are paying as well. Can they keep both Lawan and Saffold at that price tag? We'll see. The other guy you have to think about is Ben Jones, the center. He's a unrestricted free agent, but he loves this community. He's a huge leader on the offense and in that locker room, and he's one of the toughest guys you'll find. He's also getting a little bit older, but you know John Robinson and Mike Vrabel like him. You imagine they want to keep him around if they can, but those are all of the discussions you have to have on the offensive line when thinking about this Titans team. Ben Jones... What do you do? And what does he want to do at this point in his career? I can tell you this much, and you'll hear it here in just a second. He was one of the guys that was most distraught by losing that game in the playoffs because he thought this team had the shot to win a championship. And for them to not live up to that, not get to that place, was very, very frustrating for Ben Jones. And here were his thoughts after that playoff loss against the Bengals. Yeah, you never prepare for this. Um, you're always worrying about the game that you're in. You're worrying about the next game. And when you don't have something to prepare for right now, it's hard. Because for me, I was last year in the deal, I'm like, I'm trying to win a championship. And my mindset every day is like, what does it take to win? And when you fall short, it hurts. Because that's the only thing that mattered to me. It was tr everything, every day was as a process of getting there and we fell short today and it hurts. Did you keep Go ahead. Yeah. Playoff football, player margin hurts, um, sucks. Um, we're in situations where we gotta be better as a whole offense, we gotta execute better and can't make those mistakes in these kind of games. Yeah, um, we're playing complimentary football. Defense played well. They got us the ball when we needed it. Got us back on track. And we didn't capitalize when we needed to down the road. Uh, Taylor, with a, we asked Taylor about the front drive. It seemed like you guys were trying to make it block. He said the idea was to try to score with no time left and not get Cincinnati another chance. Um, obviously, the interception happened on that. But, you know, was that kind of the... the the mindset of this of the final drive, the final drive. Yeah, I'm, I didn't. Uh, I'm going out there trying to execute each play. I'm trying to get us whatever play. That's um, 
the head man's job to manage the games and put us in the best situation to win. He's done a hell of a job all year, and we trust uh, Vrabel and Todd to, to make those calls for us, and we just got to go out there and execute. And we came up short and put our defense in a bad situation, and it was that time they couldn't bail us out. Yeah, um, we had everybody back. We had a week off. Um, it's it ended the way we wanted. We wanted to make a run. Our body's feeling good, and it just sucks. It sucks that it ended this way. When you look at just you know everything that you guys overcame, you every game overcoming some type of injury and all the talent, like how much more frustrating is it? Be yeah, um, I want to be out there every play, and that's my mindset. I'm gonna try to whatever. If I can step on that field, I'm gonna play. Um, I love every guy on this team. And we fell short today. And losing is hard because you can't come back and fix it next week. That's what you lose in their season. You want a quick turnaround. You want the game to be on Thursday. You don't want to think about it. Now we got to think about this for the whole offseason. And it hurts. It's too early to reflect on the season. You guys had 12 wins, about CDFC, and winning division for a second straight year. Yeah, um, for me, <laughs> I'm trying to win. I'm, I'm trying to win a championship. That's why I play this game. And anything short is not what I want to be. Um, that's what hurts because you can only play this game for so long and I want to win. Titan center Ben Jones there after the disappointing end to the season. For more on the offensive line now and for more on what the Titans are thinking about with some of their rookies as well because one of the things you have to think about with the, with the offensive line is what are you going to do at right tackle? They drafted Dylan Radens there in the second round last year to play him at right tackle. And he didn't win the job. It was David Questenberry, who was at right tackle all year. That was unexpected. They need a permanent solution at right tackle. Will it be Dylan Radens? Will it be someone else? How does that impact the decisions elsewhere on the offensive line for the Titans? And Radens, by the way, isn't the only rookie that struggled. A lot of these rookies had no impact at all because of injuries. Caleb Farley, the first-round pick and cornerback, torn ACL, played three games. Monty Rice played 10 games, third-round pick. Linebacker played 10 games, actually showed some really bright moments out there. Season-ending ankle injury. Rashad Weaver was a fourth-round pick. He was going to be a rotational piece, an outside linebacker to be a part of that pass-rushing rotation as well. Broke his leg in the first game he played. The rookies just didn't have much of an impact, and that is the second consecutive season that that is the case with a rookie class for the Tennessee Titans. So John Robinson and Mike Vrabel looking at all those rookies, all those prospects up there, the NFL Combine, it's on them. They need to have a better draft class. Whether it just be selections or luck, they've got to get more out of the 2022 draft class than what they got from 2021 or from 2020. The question is, with the 2021 class, how much of those injuries mean you can get more out of those guys moving forward? Those are part of the questions we asked to our guy Jonathan Hutton, the Outkick Insider, who covers the Titans and joins us every Sunday night on the Electric Power Company Sunday Sports Central. Time to say hello to our buddy and insider, Jonathan Hutton from Outkick 360. Jonathan, that's two years in a row. The Titans have gotten almost nothing out of their first round pick, this time due to injury with Caleb Farley. How does a healthy Farley, Monty Rice, and Rashad Weaver fit into this defense next year? Well, Steve, you hope to at least get one starter out of that. They, they drafted Caleb Farley to be a starter, and, and it was slow out of the gate, and then Right as we were starting to see something from him, he got hurt. Right, right when we could see what he could do. And, and, and for him now, it's about getting reps. But first, it's about him coming back as healthy as possible from that, from that ACL injury. Monty Rice is a quality backup, but I'll be honest, uh, he was better this year than what I thought he was going to be. He adjusted to the pro, pro game really well and, and, and quickly for that matter. He picked up coverages. He was good against the run. He got better from training camp on, and they had no problem putting him into the game. And I think because of that, we may see him start a few games next year based on matchups and who they choose to bring back at, at linebacker. And then Rashad Weaver was hurt before he even got started. But in that small glimpse of what we saw, 
it was pretty good. I, I think he's, he was drafted to be a rotational piece on this defensive line. He can still be a solid rotational piece moving forward, uh, especially with that little piece that we saw from him, which was really good production for Weaver. Second round pick Dylan Raidens played sparingly in 12 games and played as much guard as tackle. Can he still be the answer at right tackle or what's his role starting next year? Well, I mean, it's a bit of an unknown. He stepped in and started uh, against the 49ers at left tackle, and I thought he was better than just a player who could hold up. I thought he was fine. Uh, we didn't see a guy who looked out of place. And I I'm intrigued to follow that year one to year two production for him, Steve, because he needs a massive offseason in the weight room. But when you look at their offensive line and who they can bring back and what they might do, Raidens has to figure into that mix because – Right now, I don't think they have a great answer at right tackle. And this is a huge offseason for him in that area because while we can call him a good rotational piece, a good swing piece across the offensive line, you just don't draft those guys in the second round. You draft starters in the second round on the O-line. And, and Raidens is an unknown piece based on how his rookie season played out. Yeah, let's talk more about that offensive line. Taylor Lewan struggled to come back from a torn ACL early last year. Roger Saffold battled injuries all season, played well, and Ben Jones is now a free agent. What, if any, other changes are coming to the offensive line in 2022? Well, they, they have some, some aging, high-paid players, as, as you've pointed out, and it depends on the money here. The, the Titans can save against the cap by dropping salaries of Taylor Lewan and Roger Saffold. Both players are guys who, at this point, unfortunately... We expect to miss time, rather game, either games or, or in-game missing time and drive to drive. And unfortunately, we're used to Taylor Lewan missing games at left tackle, either for injury or suspension. Saffold's shoulder has been a recurring problem for him throughout his career. Now it's a nerve issue in his shoulder. But can you drop both players? Probably not. Ben Jones is a veteran. I, I think they're going to resign even at 33 because he's smart, durable. He's extremely tough. He's a leader for you on that offensive line. And then we, we, of course, mentioned right tackle. All that being said, Steve, this is a group that I think is better tweaked than it is overhauled. That This is about taking a piece and choosing to replace that piece to strengthen your core while also potentially creating more cap room. And I think they'll be diligent in how they go about that. I don't think they want to completely overhaul the left side of that line right now. All right. Roster changes are coming soon. Jonathan Hutton will talk combine next week. Can't wait. Thank you, Steve.